Dr. Althea O'Shaughnessy. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist at the Scher Institute for Reproductive Medicine, also known as CIRM, New York City. And today I'm going to be talking to you about polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is the first in a series of talks surrounding this particular topic. The term polycystic ovarian syndrome is extremely deceiving. And as a matter of fact, many women with polycystic ovarian syndrome have completely normal appearing ovaries. PCOS is the most common endocrine, female endocrine disorder and affects anywhere from 5 to 15 percent of women worldwide. So it's extremely common. Now, when a woman comes in to be evaluated for this particular condition, one of the first things that she asks is, is there anything I did to cause this? Am I too overweight? Am I eating the wrong things? And really the answer to that question is absolutely not. And as a matter of fact, new research is coming out showing that PCOS is a very complex genetic disorder. And as a matter of fact, they're finding more and more mutations linked to polycystic ovarian syndrome. So when a woman is born, she has a genetic predisposition to develop polycystic ovarian syndrome. However, when do those symptoms start? When do women show signs that they may have polycystic ovarian syndrome? Well, that doesn't occur until puberty or when they first get their period. And in some, in some uh, women with polycystic ovarian syndrome, that doesn't happen maybe till early adulthood. So what are the symptoms associated with PCOS? And um, we'll go through this step by step. Um, so the first symptom associated with PCOS is the ovaries and how the ovaries look. And women with PCOS can have enlarged ovaries. Now, unlike what a lot, a lot of women think, um, that they have a lot of cysts on their ovaries, they're actually not cysts. Um, they actually have small, immature follicles and they can have many of these and cause the ovarian volume to be larger. Um, these follicles are the structures that hold the egg that will grow and rupture at the time of ovulation, but for some reason women with polycystic ovarian syndrome, they don't continue to develop. They're arrested at that particular state. And interestingly, we find that women with enlarged ovaries the number of follicles definitely correlates with the severity, severity of the disease and also correlates with the overproduction of testosterone from the ovary. And that brings us to the second symptom associated with PCOS, and that is hyperandrogenism. That means a high level of male hormone, um, principally testosterone. Now, high levels of testosterone lead to other symptoms. Um, and one of the more disturbing symptoms, particularly in women, is hirsutism, which means that there's an overgrowth of coarse hair um, in different areas of the body, mainly the face, the upper lip, the chin, the side of the face, um, and the extremities. And in more severe cases, you can have an overgrowth uh, in front of the chest, um, the upper back, throughout the abdomen. Now, also, the overproduction of testosterone can, uh, can lead to increased acne. The, um, there is wonderful treatment for this, for these particular um, symptoms, and we are not going to be getting into treatment options uh, in this particular talk. That will be actually part of the next talk on uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, elevated testosterone can also cause other, uh, other problems and that is menstrual irregularity. And that's the third symptom that I need to talk to you about. So that means that you're getting irregular periods. And some women with polycystic ovarian syndrome can have completely normal cycles, but many of them can skip, skip periods, whether they skip a month, two months, three months, six months. And some women with, uh, some women with uh, PCOS actually have no periods. That's called amenorrhea. Now, when a woman doesn't have regular periods, that means that she's not ovulating on a regular basis. So, unfortunately, this can also lead to infertility in some women, and not all women with PCO have infertility. 
Now, why do women with polycystic ovarian syndrome have irregular periods? Well, we know they have high levels of testosterone, but you have to understand what occurs in a normal menstrual cycle. Why do women have periods on a monthly basis? Well, basically what has to happen, there has to be proper communication between the brain, particularly the pituitary gland, and the ovaries. And there's production of or secretion of certain hormones such as luteinizing hormone or LH and follicle, stimula fo follicle stimulating hormone or FSH from the pituitary. And the secretion occurs in very pulsatile fashion. And when that is uh, impacted in any way, then the communication is, is no longer normal. And the ovary is not going to respond. The ovary is not going to produce the prop proper amounts of estrogen, which then feed back to the brain. And so ovulation is not going to occur on a regular basis or will, will not occur at all. And if you don't ovulate, um, then you're not going to get regular periods, and you're definitely going to have issues with infertility if you're trying to get pregnant. Now, a lot of women um, also with polycystic ovarian syndrome have another uh, symptom, and that is high insulin levels, hyperinsulinemia. Why is that? Well, um, they find that some women with polycystic ovarian syndrome have insulin resistance. That means that the pancreas which makes insulin, has to secrete more in order to stabilize normal sugar levels, which is what insulin does. It's a very important hormone. Now, this high insulin level, unfortunately, puts women with PCOS at higher risk for developing other serious conditions, such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and even diabetes during pregnancy. That's called gestational diabetes. So that's why it's very important that women with polycystic ovarian syndrome maintain a normal weight. They have, you know, a, a good diet. Um, they exercise. Because if you're obese, that's going to make you even more likely to have high insulin levels. And then, of course, put you at high risk for the other serious medical conditions. Another very common question, and this will be the last portion of this uh, talk. Another common question is, well, what if I don't treat this disease? What if I just let it go? I, so what? I don't get my periods. Well, again, many times this particular disorder occurs and starts in adolescence. And again, the common symptoms are acne and hirsutism. And young women, particularly when they're going through puberty and in their early teenage years, these are very distressing symptoms and they get progressively worse. They can get much worse, much harder to treat uh, to reverse these, uh, these symptoms. So it's best that these young women are diagnosed early and that they start treatment early. Likewise, uh, women who have irregular periods can have um, very heavy bleeding when they get their period. They can even have, uh, they can even de develop a hemorrhage, and that, which may require surgery. And in in very extreme cases, can develop endometrial cancer. So it is very important that women with polycystic ovarian syndrome um, are um, go to a, a medical professional that is very uh, has a lot of awareness surrounding this particular disorder so that they get the proper diagnosis and the proper treatment. So this ends this particular talk on polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, the next talk will be about the treatment options for women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. And I'd like to thank you for tuning in with me today. Um, and if you have any questions regarding this topic, feel free to email me. Thanks again.